If you watched a few of my previous videos, you'll know that I started working full-time at Microsoft about two months ago as a technical program manager. Also, I know I look sort of tired in this video. I'm not that tired. I thought it could be sort of helpful to walk through what you could expect within the first week or two when starting out at a new tech company. So if you're a computer science student or a new grad, or maybe just generally interested in software engineering or some other technical field, and maybe you just want a little bit of insight on what you will be able to expect expect as well as how can you actually start contributing. So you get the offer letter, you signed it, congratulations, uh, and now you get to just kick back until your start date, but when your start date actually arrives, what can you expect? Well first you'll most likely not have access to anything because it takes some time at big tech companies for your credentials to populate within all the internal services. So you may have access to say the payroll site, but not have access to look at your team's GitHub or some other service that you need. So it could just be a lot of waiting around within the first couple days to just be able to actually like look at things. I know when I first started my first day, I actually had to call technical support in order to log in. Uh, because my credentials weren't authenticated yet. <laughs> but also on your first day, you'll likely be able to meet your team and participate in your first daily standup. So for those not familiar, standup is a big part of the agile software development process, in which case you meet every day. You basically talk about what you were working on yesterday, what you were going to plan on working today, and if you need help on anything. So on my first day, I got to participate in my first remote daily stand-up and uh, sort of see the team. It was a little bit odd because, again, it's not in person, but you know, it was still pretty wholesome. Within the first day or the first couple days, you'll likely have to meet with your direct manager in order to see what their expectations of you are for maybe that first week, that first two weeks, the, f the first month as you sort of get settled. And you'll likely have to be onboarded both company-wide as well as team-specific. So for example, I work within Azure, which is Microsoft's cloud platform. So I had to do the all the regular Microsoft onboarding stuff. So like the new hire orientation, enrolling in direct deposit, paperwork, regular Microsoft trainings, everything like that, as well as getting familiar with all the sort of technologies that the company uses internally. So again, like what they use for direct deposit, maybe what they used for, uh, equity or what they used for time off or you know what sort of project management software they use all different technologies like that so basically my first week was all the regular logistical stuff so Again, paperwork, meeting up with the team, setting up my coding environment, which is a huge thing to make sure you're comfortable and can sort of hop into work as fast as you can. Additionally, reading up on the existing code base for what I would be working on, as well as looking at syntax or C sharp because I never wrote code in C sharp before. It's a lot like Java. So generally in your first week, you can expect a lot of just downtime because there's a lot of passive work, you know, like watching trainings, filling out paperwork. It's not like the most impactful stuff, but it's all like logistical things that sort of need to be done before you can start actually contributing. But for me, since I started at Microsoft full time remotely, I didn't actually get a tour of the campus. But if you don't start remote and at a lot of tech companies, you'll likely get a tour from someone on your team about the campus, about you know where the free food is at, the free drinks, which is super important, where the gym is, where all the facilities are, like where you need to badge in, all the things like that, where the store is, and you'll probably also get some free swag, you know, which is real important, you know. So going into my second week, I got more of a grasp on what sort of my responsibilities are going to be as well as sort of what I'm actually going to be doing. So although I am a program manager at Microsoft, my team and the product really needed a uh, software developer, software engineer, or just generally software development work done. So I kind of just filled that role. Therefore, a lot of my responsibilities like day to day are more of a software engineer. So I open Visual Studio every day, I code every day, I, uh, you know, I read documentation, I do unit testing, all of those regular sort of software engineering responsibilities. And then some of my time is spent on more like program manager 
oriented tasks like creating architecture diagrams or sequence diagrams, updating documentation, you know, talking to other people on the team or, you know, making product demos. So like I said previously, you'll likely have very team specific onboarding and trainings as well. So for me, since I'm in Azure, that involved all the Azure trainings and becoming familiar with the Azure cloud platform as a whole. So going into my second week, I actually had like a full four day boot camp that went over all the capabilities of Azure, navigating it, how to deploy resources, and there were even labs that you had to complete in order to sort of uh, you know, pass the boot camp or just complete the boot camp in general. And anyone working in Azure basically has to do this boot camp in order to get up to date on the technologies and become familiar with them. So at these large tech companies like Google, Amazon, Apple, Microsoft, all those sorts, there are so many different teams that work on so many different things. So you could think like a software engineer in Xbox will probably have different responsibilities and ultimately a different software development process and different internal tools compared to a software engineer in say Microsoft Office. Therefore, you can definitely expect that at least within your first couple weeks, there's going to be a more like team specific onboard, as well as maybe if you have extra training boot camps, like I mentioned that I had to do for Microsoft Azure, or you know other, other sorts of trainings. I didn't do this, but I also know that at a lot of tech companies, uh, within the first couple weeks, you might do some pair programming with an existing software engineer that can help you set up your environment, tell you what repos you need to pull, how, how to get like the existing code base running locally or on a VM or whatever you're doing. And this is sort of where imposter syndrome can rear its ugly head is that you're taking in so much information so quickly, you're getting introduced to so many technologies so fast and you might just feel like that maybe you're not meant for this or that you don't deserve this or you're not smart enough, but just know that that's extremely common within tech specifically and it does get better. And you'll often hear the analogy that it's like drinking from a fire hose just because you're getting so much information. And also like just generally the software development life cycle is different than say doing a programming assignment for your computer science class. And you'll probably be working with technologies you're not familiar with. And that can be very stressful and anxiety inducing. I know for me, I had never used the Azure Cloud platform before and I had never coded in C Sharp. So just trying to get caught up to date on that definitely gave me some, you know, imposter syndrome, just a little bit. But luckily the product I was working on, I'm still currently working on, uh, it's, it's fairly new and the team is quite small. So I didn't have to look through like millions of lines of code in order to, to understand what's going on, uh, which definitely helped reduce that sort of imposter syndrome feeling. And luckily it only took me maybe a couple hours a day to just look at the existing code base and sort of track what was going on. But if you're worried about this, just know that it's super common. And if it's actually stressing you a lot when you're on the job, you can always talk to your manager and hopefully they can relieve some of that stress and pressure. So right now, I'm two months into working at Microsoft, and although I'm definitely not an expert, I do feel confident in my ability to contribute and you know, utilize the resources on Azure, put in good code, all the things like that. So that was pretty much my experience with my first two weeks at Microsoft, pretty much just, you know, a lot of trainings, getting caught up to date, and that's just sort of the boring stuff before you can start contributing that you just sort of need to do. But going into my third week, I could actually start doing research contributing to the product, taking on some user stories within sprints, all that sort of good stuff. Now that I've been at Microsoft for a little over two months, I gotta say that I actually do really like it and I actually like coding a lot more than I did in college. And my team and my product is very new and small, so I can have a lot of personal impact, which is just really rewarding. If you wanna learn more about how I got into the Microsoft recruiting pipeline, check out a video I made on that where I go through pretty much my entire process as well, if you want to see a, you know, a day in the life of a program manager at Microsoft Remote Edition, you know, go check that out. Try to, I don't know, I felt like I slept a lot. I slept, today's a weekend, I slept in, I don't know, my eyes just seem like really tired. Maybe I need to moisturize or drink more water more. Please comment down below any suggestions for future videos that you might want to see or that could prove useful to you. I got some other videos working in the pipeline. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. You guys can always count on bad British accents from your boy over here. Tune in to a future video of mine. My future self would thank you dearly. And uh, hopefully I'll see you in a future one. Bye bye.